اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي نفر قلوب العارفين بنور معرفته واثبت فعاد انبيائه واولياءه بقصص الانبياء والمرسلين واكمل ايمان المسلمين والمؤمنين بولايه علي امير المؤمنين عليه السلام والصلاه والسلام والتحيه والكرام على افضل الموجودات العبد المؤيد والرسول المسدد المصطفى الامجد المحمود الاحمد اعني ابا القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه واله وسلم واله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين لا سيما بقيه الله في الارضين روحي وارواح العالمين على تراب مقدمه الفدا واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله الحكيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نجعل الأرض محادا والجبال أوتادا وخلقناكم أزواجا وجعلنا الليل لباسا وجعلنا النهار معاشا صدق الله العلي العظيم صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجه We are doing the tafsir of Surah Naba, the great news. And it is Surah number 78 in the Holy Quran. Every language has uh, two parts, poems and prose. Poems are called in Arabic Nazm. Nazm, where you combine the words in such a way that they rhyme. And, and that is called Nazm. And prose, which is Nasr. Nasr. Nazm and Nasr. Nasr is basically... Even in Farsi and Urdu, we use prose, the words that we normally speak. But in Arabic language, there are three things. Nazm, Nasr, and Qur'an. So there is poems, prose, and the Holy Qur'an. The Qur'an is beyond poetry and prose. It is beyond the reach of mankind. It is a word of God. Now, in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a miraculous surah. It is um, a, a Makki surah, a surah that was revealed in Mecca. And we have started the tafsir of this uh, surah and uh, two questions have come so far. Um, one was, what is the meaning of Allah? Allah uh, is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and many people believe it is from Al-Ilah. The others believe that it is not an Al-Ilah. It is a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that combines all positive attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is a name that means all Uh, positive attributes like ilm, qudrat and hayat are with the necessary being. Allah is the necessary being without which nothing can exist. The other one is that why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we reveal the Holy Quran. Inna anzalnahu fi Why not I? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes say I and sometimes says we? Wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes no advice and no uh, system, And he doesn't want any human beings to be taking part in it. He says, I. Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. Indeed, I appoint a vice president on earth. Or the khalifa on earth. Inni ja'iluka lil nasi mama. I am making you an imam. So he does not wish for any advice or any um, uh, interference from mankind. Then he says, I. And we is for many reasons. Number one. One of the reasons for saying we is when he wants to. Say we as in respect. Even in uh, uh, in England we say the Queen's English. Um, sometimes she says we but she means I. Um, and likewise in Arabic when Allah says we it is for himself, for respect, for majesty. So he says we. Sometimes there is a whole system. Inna anzalnahu fi al qadr. Alam is alam asbab. There are cause and effect in this universe. So he says we and he means I have sent it to Loha Mahfuz. From there it went to Mikhail, Mikhail, gave it to Jibrail, Jibrail to, took it to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there's a whole system. And there are many other reasons why Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says we. But nevertheless, uh, we're in the seat of Surah Naba and today we're going to start from verse number six. Alam naj'alil alam naj'alil arda mihada. Have we not made the earth um, a, a 
Mehad is from Mahad. Mahad is a cradle. Have we not made the earth a cradle for you? There are different translations in English, but I, I like this word the best. Mahad is cradle. Cradle, if you look, a child is placed in a cradle and it moves for the child to rest and to, uh, to, to feel at ease. So when you're driving a car, it, you know, it, you enjoy it. Any, um, you know, like a plane, it is on the move, but you don't. So Mahad is a cradle when it is moving. You're not in pain. You feel at ease. So Allah SWT says, Alam mihada. Have we not made the earth like a cradle for you? So it is implying that it is on a move, but you don't feel the move. It is like a cradle. It, it moves like a child sees the uh, the cradle as means of ease it is it moves but it does not bother the child likewise the earth is on the move but it does not bother any person we don't even feel that it is on move so it is on movement so allah SWT says alam naj'alil arda mihada have we not made the earth a cradle for you and it is like a mother and that's why we call the earth mother earth so, uh, you know, when the mother carries a child, it is, you know, when the mother is carrying a child, the child feels at comfort, you know, because it feels the heartbeat of the mother and it feels comfortable in mother's hands. And likewise, we feel that the earth is a means of comfort for us. We don't, so we enjoy this movement. So it is on move and it forms the weathers, you know, like the, uh, the winter, the uh, spring, the summer and the autumn, you know, they are formed through the movement of earth. The day and light are formed through the movement of earth. And all of these are for the comfort of mankind and the ease of mankind and for the livelihood of mankind. So this whole of this movement is, uh, Allah SWT says, it is we who have made it like this because he created this whole universe. There are so many galaxies in it and so many uh, stars and many of those stars have their own solar system you know like their own you know planets and those planets have their own moon sometimes you know so alam najalil arda mihada have we not be, have made this earth a cradle for you so it is a blessing of allah SWT. he is now counting his blessings that after saying these he says alam najalil arda mihada have we not made the earth a cradle wal jabala autada have we not made the uh, uh, the mountains Jabal is a plural of Jabal. Jabal is a mountain in Arabic. Jabal. Jabal, Jabal. Well, Jabala, Autada. Have we not made the mountains? Autad. Autad is a plural of Watad. But here, stakes, people have said, you know, translations. Have we not made the uh, mountains like uh, nails for you? You know, like you make a house and then to hold things, you place nails in them. So Allah SWT says, just like you place nails to hold things, I have placed mountains in earth to hold this earth. So it is, those mountains are very important. They are not um, just haphazardly appeared, but Allah SWT says, I have placed them. Now, uh, we, we hear, we have read in the... Uh, Ayat and Rivayat of the Masumin Alayhi Salaam, you know, the verses of the Holy Quran and that everything on earth started off with water. Everything was water. So it was all just water. And then, you know, the Holy Quran says, we made everything live through water. So everything has water in it. Even human beings, we are, most of us, most of this body is water. You know, 70% of us. And this earth is, a third of this earth is, sometimes, you know, they say a quarter of it is only dry land and uh, three-fourths of water, you know, so that's how it started. And the place where it started drying up was in Avala Baitin Wudi Al Nasa Lilati Bibakata. Mubarakah Mahudan lil Alameen. Allah SWT in Surah Al Imran verse number 96 says that indeed and the first place, the first house that was placed for the people on earth was the one in Bekka. Bekka is Mecca. 
Mubarak Mahmudan lil alamin. It is blessed and a means of guidance for the mankind. Um, and that's why it is also called Ummul Qura, the mother of all the lands. And that's why the people that live there are called Ummi, the people who lived from mother, the motherland. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, made the earth and he placed the mountains on earth and there are mountains inside the earth. So these are like, um, uh, you know, this word Autad has also appeared in Surah Fajr. And Fir'aun, the one who had nails. Why has he called the Fir'aun Pharaoh of nails? Some ulama believe that he used to, any of his enemies, he would get his soldiers to place nails in their heads. Like, so they, they would not just hit once, they'll slowly place the nail in the head. So the person would take long time to die. So this word Autad is, is like nail stakes in earth. Allah has place in you know so it you know started drying up and then this one person was his name a christian writer he died i think a few years ago um a lebanese christian um he wrote many many books on uh, on different topics and especially a lot of books on imam ali his name was george jordak george jordak uh, wrote a book on Imam Ali Salam, a sort of Adal al Insani, the voice of human justice. There's a brief translation in English. Those are six volumes in Arabic. But anyway, he said that a person when I was young, you know, a Lebanese person gave me a Nahjab Allah as a gift. And he said, I said, What is this? He said, This is by Imam Ali He said, Imam, you know, meaning probably a religious figure. So he said, uh, When did he live? He said, Ah, he was assassinated 14 centuries ago. He said, Well, I said, you know, at that back, you know, by back then, probably 13 centuries back. He said, well, you know, I said to myself, a person who lived 13 centuries back, you know, what has he got to do? What has he got to say something for me? So he said, I just didn't read the book. And uh, one day he said, I picked up Nehru Balaga and I started reading and I opened up from the middle. And when I read a sermon, it said, Imam Ali Islam said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything from water. So I said to myself, what is he talking about? Water, you know, we are I'm not so he said, I just put the book down. I said, I'm not gonna read this book. Someone said these sermons 13 centuries ago, and you know, there's got nothing to do with me. So he said, one day I was watching the National Geographical Channel, which had recently started, you know, the Arabic and English one. Uh so he said, you know, in the 60s or 70s, he said, I I was uh, watching and they said everything started from water. Uh, you know, the, the, every creation is has some water, you know, the plants, the animals, and human beings. He said, then I said, I decided I'm going to read Nature Balaga. He said, then I read it from the beginning to the end a few hundred times. Anyway, so Allah SWT says, we have made everything from water, but here he says, Alam Nihada, have we not made the earth like a cradle? Well, Jabala Otada, and the, the, the mountains are like nails, and there are has a book called Ma'arif Quran. I'm not sure if there is an English translation, but I've heard there's an English translation. Beautiful. He goes into those verses about creation of this earth and this universe, and they are beautiful. They go into a lot of depth, which I'm not going to go into. If you wanted me, then I can probably do a whole session, um, uh, probably explaining. Then he says, Wakalaknakum Aswaja. And we made you from a pair. Everyone was created. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that everyone, many people say this is about physics, that you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that everyone is created from an electron and a proton, proton and electron. So everything has, you know, like dual. So we're all, you know, even the plants and everything has uh, from pair, that everything is created from a pair. But anyway, but we are created from Adam and Eve. We're all children of Hazrat Adam and Hawa, Adam and Eve. Um, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in the Holy Quran says, uh, Inna min dhakarin wa untha. We created you from a man and a woman. Uh, and then we distributed you amongst the uh, tribes. Um, you know, and uh, different uh, ethnicities and, you know, different races. So that you be acquainted with each other. In akramakum in the And the best of you are the ones who are the most God conscious, the most pious. So even animals, uh, you know, uh, 
and uh, even plants, everything is from two. So Allah SWT says, وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ But here he's speaking to the mankind, human beings. وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَادَ But even jinns are from two. So he says that وَخَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَزْوَادَ We made you from uh, a pair, from Adam and Eve. And uh, in another verse in the Holy Quran, it says that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created وَخَلَقْنَا مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا We created Adam and we created his wife from him. But now many people say that he, she was created from one of his ribs. That's not true. What it means, وَخَلَقْنَا مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And we created his wife, his partner. We created Adam and then we created his partner from him. Meaning, we created Hawa from the same earth that we created Adam from. So Allah SWT created Adam from dust or earth and he created Hawa from the same earth. So we created uh, his partner from him, meaning from the same earth. Or min fadilatina tiha, you know, min fadilatina tihi. We created uh, from the remaining earth of Adam, we created Hawa, his wife, uh, Eve. Then Allah gave them two sons, um, Habil and Qabil, who were, and then Sheath, Sath, and then, um, you know, uh, Cain and Abel, and then they were given Allah SWT sent down who is for, for them from the paradise and who they married and they had children from. So the Imam al-Islam and many other scholars believe that never ever the marriage between brother and sister was allowed and therefore no, even none of the children of Adam married each other, you know. So the children of Adam did not marry each other. Uh, they were sent who is and then the cousins married each other. So his grandchildren married, you know, grandchildren from one son married the grandchildren of the other. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we khalaqnakum azwaja. But now many people may question that how can a man marry Huri? But you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, that's how he, you know, even in paradise we will marry them. Anyway, waja'alna nawmakum subata. And then we made your sleep a means of rest. Now, sleep is one of the greatest, biggest doctors, they say. And Wajalla Nomakum Sobata, you know, in Allah SWT has called uh, Nom is sleep. Wajalla Jalla, we have made. Jalla, we have made. Nomakum, your sleep. Sobata, a means of rest. Now, sleep is not death, you know. So we read in many of the books a normal akhul maut. Sleep is a sister of death. It is not death because in death we lose our soul and we cannot feel anything. But in sleep, we don't. Our senses are not working properly, meaning we cannot think and we cannot um, reflect. But our breath and you know and our breath is still you know we're still taking breath and our soul is traveling. So many times you know one of the Proves on the soul is a deja vu. You know, when you feel this has happened before. And uh, that is a proof Ibn Sina, one of the greatest scientists ever to have lived on the surface of the earth. Ibn Sina, ever Sina in English. And up until the 19th century, uh, the Europeans used to study his book, Al Qanun, on uh, medicine. And even still, they study many parts of his book on. Uh, on soul, you know, he has said so many things that, you know, none of the other people have discovered. And he says that what I have read in books uh, and what I have discovered myself, what I have discovered myself is a lot more than what I have read in other books. So Ibn Sina, Ibn Sina, even, you know, even today they regard him as one of the greatest scientists and the greatest philosophers. One of the proofs on the existence of soul he has given is the deja vu, you know, when you sleep, you know, sometimes you feel, oh, this has happened. And you know, no, I haven't come to this place, but I have. I feel that I have, or this has happened, it hasn't happened. I haven't met this person, but you have. You feel that you have. So Ibn Sina says that you experienced it, that, you know, meeting that person or going to that place in your dream. It was your soul that was traveling. And because it was so, such a strong experience in, uh, in the dream that you even remember it when you wake up. So, you know, sleep is a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sleep deprivation can kill a person. So one of the greatest doctors, they say, is sleep. 
we made you sleep a means of rest. So Subat is rest and we need this rest. Um, and uh, so there are many things that we experience in uh, in a while asleep, you know, but Allah SWT says that, you know, death is something different. Uh, in Habat, uh, Nabi Uzair alayhi salam, alayhi salam, in the Holy Quran says, Fa'amatahullah in Surah Baqarah, verse number 259, it says, Fa'amatahullah, may Allah SWT put him to death or sleep for a hundred years. Thumma ba'athahu qala kam labistha. And then Allah woke him up and asked him, you know, so you raise him. So even after sleep, we wake up. And even after death, we will wake up. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked him, Kam labista, how long have you slept? Qala labista, yom wa ba'da yom. I have slept a day or a part of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered him, Qala labista, qala bal labista mi'ata aam. Indeed, you have slept for a hundred years. You... So likewise, when we rise from our death, in surah, you know, or even about ashab kahf Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them, uh, the people of Hasab Kahf, you know, the people of the cave were asked, How long have you slept? They said, A day or a part of the day. Where Allah SWT says, No, they were sleeping for 300 years. They had slept for 300 years plus nine. So basically, uh, 100 years lunar, uh, basically, the 100 uh, solar years equal 203. Lunar years, so uh, so three hundred years when they had slept, solar years that make three hundred and nine years in in lunar calendar, because every thirty three years one year is added to our life in lunar calendar in lunar years. Anyway, on the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Qalu ya wailana ma baathana in Surah Ya, you know, in Surah Yasin, verse number fifty two. Ya wailana ma baathana ma marqadina. What?" Who has woken us up from our uh, graves? Who's uh, woke us up? Meaning on the day of judgment, the death will seem like sleep to them. So they will sleep. They will they will feel that we had been sleeping for centuries and now they've been woken up on the day of judgment. So sleep, you know, Allah SWT says, You know, sleep is a necessity of this life. And every 24 hours we need some sort of sleep. And hadith say that you should sleep for six hours at least. Uh, some say up to eight hours. So between six to eight hours, you know, different bodies work differently. Some sleep need six, seven, eight hours. Some can do even with less. Some can do with five hours and some even probably four or five hours. You know, generally, medically, they say that you should sleep about seven hours. Um, but if you sleep too much, too much sleep also is not good for you. It makes you dull mentally and also... If you too sleep too much, it makes you hard-hearted. Too much food makes you drink too much and too much water makes you sleepy and too much sleep makes you hard-hearted and that doesn't make you cry and that makes you heedless, ghafil. People who uh, don't care about anything, you know, even uh, admonishment doesn't matter to them. You advise them, nothing matters to them because they don't take anything, you know, they've become so hard-hearted. So the sleep is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Waja'alna nawmakum subata. Then Allah says, Waja'alna layla libasa. And we made the night a dress. So meaning he covered everything. You know, he covered all the lights, you know, and just like at night you light the lights and you know you light the lamps. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he made all of those stars shine for you at night and from the skies. But the biggest star, sun is hiding. So well, how does the night and day happen? Basically, the, the earth is facing the sun and it is on a rotation. So the earth keeps moving. So as soon as it turns the sun, there is light on earth. And as soon as it turns away, rotates away, then because it's not facing the sun, there is night. So the night and day, that's how they happen. Likewise, whenever we are facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or when we turn to his mercy because he's not in a direction when we turn to his mercy then he gives us blessings and when we turn away from him you know when we turn away from his mercy or we don't pay attention to his obligations or his orders and commands then we go into darknesses of misguidance and disobedience and away from his mercy 
सो ऑलवेज टर्न टू अल्लाह सुबह तला सो वजालना वजालना लैला लिबास सो अल्लाह सुबह तला हैज मेड यू नो द नाइट ही इज कॉल दैट इट इज ड्रेस ही इज कवर्ड ही हैज कवर्ड वजालना लैला लिबास इट इज अ कवर इट इज अ ड्रेस so it's a beautiful parable that allah subhanahu wa taala says it is a cover so meaning the sun hasn't you know the setting of the sun is basically a cover that the sun has been covered that's why you have night so allah subhanahu wa taala says that he you know just like we we need to switch off and that's why he has made the night he has made the night for you to sleep so you you need your sleep and then he covers you know turns off the lights he turns the sun off meaning he covers it and that covering of the sun is basically your night and that's when you should rest we all have a nature you know so this nature we need to reflect upon and this nature has requirements and needs and amongst the natural needs is sleep and the night so the night is made for everyone to rest so part of earth there are no you know like the north pole and south pole and they have much longer days and nights than the navas they don't have a 24 hour cycle but anyway but normally we have a 24 hour cycle uh, in winter the nights are uh, longer so meaning you need more rest and in summer days are longer so the needs are different our natural needs are different allah did not make you fixated you're not like machines like 9 to 5 no it is all about nature and the nature is that the sun set and the sunrise always change they keep changing there's not fixated they're not stagnant every day there is a new time for the sunrise and the time for fajr changes the time for maghrib and isha changes so allah subhanahu wa taala has not fixated the the life circle he doesn't want you to become fixated don't become a machine reflect and think out of the box think in real terms and become an a person of the nature and don't become a person of machine punctuality is one thing islam is all about punctuality but don't become like a machine where you know you just take in and just you no know, become productive and become um and natural uh, you know our natural instincts have needs so wa ja'alna al-layla libasa and then he says we made the night into a dress and then he says وَجَعَلْنَا النَّهَارَ مَعَاشَ and then we made the earth livelihood. مَعَاش is basically عَيش. عَيش or إشرت. you know عَيش is basically livelihood or means of um, you know like resources and income. means of uh, عَيش is basically you know مَعَاش is our livelihood or our risk. all of these are called مَعَاش. you know the uh means of um uh, 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 our rest sustenance means of our sustenance these are all called maash so allah subhanahu wa taala says that uh, he has made the day uh, a, 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 a you know a, a livelihood huwa allazi ja'ala lakum al-layla litaskunu fiha wan-nahara mubsiran inna fi dhalika al-ayat liqaumin yasma'un so allah subhanahu wa taala says that he has made your night so that let us kunu fiha so that you may rest in it wan nahara mubsiran so that and the day so that you see everything in afidalika there are signs for the people who listen in all in day and night of even day and night are signs of allah subhanahu wa taala that he exists in uh, this is in surah yunus and in uh, In Surah Qasas, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Surah Two verses very beautifully says, "Qul araaytum in jallahu alaykum al-layla sarmadan ila yom al-qiyama min aale ghair Allah a ilahun ghair Allah yatiqum bidhiyain afala tasmaun." Oh, my messenger, say to them, "Have you seen that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has made the and uh, night sarmada ila yawm al-qiyamah at uh, you know he if, till the day of judgment it will always come a ilahun ghairullah have is there another lord other than allah subhanahu wa taala ya'tikum bi dhiya'in if he made it 
last for till the day of judgment would there be another god who would take this uh, who would bring you light if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made everything dark for you no afala tasma'un do you not listen qul ara'aytum in ja'ala ja'ala allah alaykum an-nahara sarmada ila yawm al-qiyamah man ilahun ghayru allah ya'tikum bi laylin taskununa fihi is there another god if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the day light forever and did not make the darkness come is there another god who would bring you the darkness so that you can um, rest in the night afala tubsirun do you not see wa min rahmatihi ja'ala lakum al-layla wan nahar litaskunu fihi wa litabtaghu min fadlih wa la'allakum tashkurun do you not see that it is his mercy that he has made the day and night for you the night and day for you so he may said night first and then day litaskunu fi so that you may rest uh in the night wa litabtaghu min fadlih and then you may seek uh, his mercy or his uh, and uh, uh, bestowance upon you la'allakum tashkurun so that you may thank him for it when hazrat adam alayhi salam was sent on earth some tradition say that when he came on earth it was night it was dark and uh, and he was really uh, upset one that he had been sent to the earth and secondly he had lost the paradise third allah was not so pleased that you know that he, he was tried um you know hazrat uh, adam alayhi salam was tried by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that don't go anywhere near this uh, plant meaning the wheat and he still ate from wheat it wasn't haram so he he didn't commit any haram because prophets are infallible so he did not commit any haram he did not commit a sin but he was tried and then you know he was covered and all of his covering went away he came on earth he picked up leaves and he covered himself and he was crying all night and then suddenly he saw the signs that there will be light on earth and as soon as he saw he saw the signs of light you know the towards the eastern side you see a small light before the sunlight you know before the sun before the sunrise you you know usually an hour two hours an hour and a half before the sunrise there is a light on earth that is called subah sadiq and that is the time when hazrat adam prayed fajr and allah said oh adam this will be your remembrance in your children that they will always pray fajr that's why we pray fajr at that time because hazrat adam alayhi salam prayed in the remembrance uh, you know prayed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as thanking him oh allah thank god there will be light you know there's a there's a sign on earth there will be light on earth so but hazrat jibril alayhi salam came to adam and said oh adam why did you eat the wheat when allah stopped you la taqrab hadhi shajara ta fakuna min zalimin oh adam don't go anywhere near you and your wife don't go anywhere near this plant then why did you go near that plant hazrat adam said oh jibril i couldn't even imagine that someone would tell a lie in the name of allah iblis came to me and he said i swear by the name of allah nothing will happen you will be even closer to allah just eat from this and i said oh he's taking an oath he has just sworn by the name of allah and he lied to me taking the name of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there is tawhid there is no sin so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ja'alna nahara ma'asha and we made the day a means of livelihood you know it's a livelihood for you meaning you make sustenance from this day so work hard during the day work when you are uh, in the day so basically means of aish means of earning so you should be working hard it is sarrafu fi maashikum aw mawdi maashikum tab taquna fihi min fadl rabbikum and you uh, do more ibadat or whatever you want to do during the day but you rest during the night and these are I mean, inshallah, we will continue with the oncoming verses. Um, so today we have covered another few verses. Verse number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So we covered five uh, verses for you: six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We covered six verses today. Alhamdulillah. Um, so inshallah, tomorrow we will continue from verse number twelve. وَبَنَيْنَا فَقَوْمَ سَبْنَ شَدَادَةَ بَعْدَ سَبْنَ هَبْنَ وَاِسَبْنَ إِنْشَالَهُ Tomorrow we'll continue. 
So today we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, hasten in the reappearance of the Prophet Imam alayhi salatu wasalam, O oh Allah, uh, all of these brothers and sisters who've organized these sessions from Husainia in Seattle, O oh Allah, increase in the tawfiq, uh, Allah, increase in the tawfiq of all of us, your servants who are trying to teach others, who are listening, who are learning, all of our families, O oh Allah, bless them all with health, wealth, sustenance, iman, and long lives. O oh Allah, remove this uh, pandemic from us. O oh Allah, take away this illness, this coronavirus, this virus. O oh Allah, um, uh, cure us all from it. Many people, many who are suffering from it. O oh Allah, uh, give them health. O oh Allah, the ones who have died from this illness and all the other people who have uh, died in the recent months and years, especially any of our relatives who may have left this world. O oh Allah, bless their souls and resurrect them with Muhammad and Ali. Muhammad alayhi salam. O oh Allah, uh, Accept our fasting and our prayers in this month and O oh Allah, give us tawfiq to understand the Holy Quran better and O oh Allah, may we be resurrected on the Day of Judgment with the Quran and Ahlul Bayt of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. O oh Allah, there are many people who have asked us to pray for them, accept their du'as and O oh Allah, the people who have no children, give blessing with children and O oh Allah, the ones who have children, um, make their children follow the path of Islam and uh, give them all a long life. Uh, o oh Allah, uh, increase in our sustenance uh, and uh, bless this Hosseinia uh, in Seattle and all the people that are serving in it. Increase, O oh Allah, give us sincere intentions to serve your religion. May we have uh, true ma'rifat of Imam alayhi salatu wasalam and may Allah increase in the uh, reappearance of the Prophet Imam alayhi salatu O oh Allah, protect our, all of our holy sites in the world especially the ones in uh, Iraq, Iran, Syria, and uh, Makkah and Medina. Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samil alim bihaqqi muhammadin wa alihi tayyibina tahirin al-mahsumin. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.